to be tool safe. Watch this video to find out the safety guidelines for this equipment. There are many different types of mixers found in the commercial and residential kitchens of today's chefs. Notice that there are usually sensible guards available. In this video, we will look at how to safely operate a stand mixer. Stand mixers are the workhorse of bakers and have a variety of uses in both baking and cooking. There are a number of attachments that can be added to a mixer to make them one of the most valuable tools in a chef's kitchen. Following these simple safety tips will help you to get the most out of your stand mixer. You have to be extra careful because sometimes they are top heavy and can even tip. As with any kitchen equipment, never use any piece of equipment until you have been instructed on how to do so safely. Most teachers have a safety passport for you to complete. Also think of what personal protective equipment, cross-contamination avoidance rules, uniform guidelines, and hygiene requirements there are for working safely in the kitchen. This will prevent both injuries and damage to the equipment. PPE includes proper chef's jackets, aprons being tied behind, no jewelry or loose long hair, and wearing non-skid safety footwear. There are many health inspection needs to consider for supply storage and general behavior such as hand washing procedures. Make sure you know what the standards are in your kitchen. For ergonomics, some kitchens also have specific rules for the location of equipment with non-skid floor surfaces and cushioned areas for repetitive work strain relief. To begin mixing it up, place the mixer on a flat surface that is free of clutter. Always ensure that the mixer is unplugged before adding any attachments. Place the mixing bowl on stand and lock it into position. Different mixers have different locking mechanisms. Your instructor will show you the correct way to lock the bowl in place for your mixer. You can also review a manual yourself. Once the bowl is securely attached to the stand, check to see that the mixer is unplugged, and then you can attach the correct beater for your project. Most beaters slide straight up and twist into a locked position. Always check to ensure that the attachments are securely attached before adding ingredients and turning on the mixer. Select the right blade for the job. Once the attachment is secure, you can now either lower the head of the mixer or raise the bowl of the mixer, depending on the model of your mixer you have. On models that have a pivoting head, there will be a lock once you lower the mixer head. After gently lowering the head, engage the lock and check that the head is secure. Larger floor mixers sometimes have a motor that will raise the bowl and lock it into position. You have to be sure about avoiding any kind of loose item entanglement with these machines. They can draw in an operator. Once the bowl is locked into position, the beater is attached and the bowl is in the correct position, it is now time to attach the guard. The guard will keep loose objects from getting caught in the turning motor of the mixer. Never operate a mixer without the guard securely in place. There are different types of guards depending on your mixer. The most common are shields that snap onto the bowl and wire cages that rotate or slide into place. Many of the larger industrial mixers found in restaurants and bakeries will not turn on unless the guard is properly secured. Some floor mixers have a reset button step built in to allow an industrial one to operate. Now that the mixer is on a flat surface, the bowl and beater are secure and the guard is in place, you may now plug in your mixer and add the ingredients. Always turn the mixer to the lowest setting first. Then, increase the speed as needed. Many recipes call for you to scrape the sides of the bowl to make sure that all ingredients are well blended. Never attempt to scrape a bowl while the mixer is running. This could lead to serious injury and damage the mixer. To scrape the bowl or help mix ingredients, turn the mixer off and allow it to come to a complete stop. Then, lift the machine head or lower the bowl, scrape the bowl and return the head or raise the bowl, ensuring that it is locked before turning the mixer on to its lowest setting, then increasing the speed. Once you're done mixing, turn the mixer off, unplug it, and either lift the head or lower the bowl. You should unplug the mixer once you are done mixing the ingredients for your recipe. Always be sure that the mixer is unplugged before removing any beaters or attachments. Some mixers require you to remove the beater before you can remove the mixing bowl, so it's a good habit to get into to unplug the mixer immediately after use. The beater can be washed in the sink with the bowl and other kitchen smallwares. Once you have checked that the mixer is unplugged, you can clean the mixer using a damp cloth. Wait, we forgot one thing. Really? What's that? To bake the cookies. Right. Let's do that after our tool safe review. All right. Remember about your PPE and safe hygiene behaviors. Be especially aware of entanglement risks. Clean carefully with cross-contamination risks in mind. Keep mixer on a flat surface. 
always unplug the mixer when setting up or inserting attachments. Never operate the mixer without the guard in place. Start with the lowest speed and speed up as required. Never insert anything into the mixer bowl while running. Clean your workspace correctly and put away unused supplies prior to the next stages of preparation. And if you're not sure about anything for safety, ask your teacher for more direction. And don't forget to be tool safe.